often people talk about the number pi and are unsure what they're talking about. So let's clarify what this is referring to. This is the symbol pi. It's a lower Greek, lowercase Greek symbol. And what it describes is a relationship in a circle. A relationship, I should say, between how far a circle is around and across. What's it compared to how far it is across. So the idea is that <clears throat> if you have a circle, any circle, it doesn't matter if it's really tiny, the size of an electron, or the orbit of an electron around an atom, or the size of a planet, it doesn't matter, a hula hoop, a donut, anything. If you have a circle, something always happens, and that's what pi is talking about. It says that, let's say you walk around a circle, doo -doo -doo, you're walking around, and then you say, okay, I want, I want to walk across this circle. So you walked around it, and you walked across it. It doesn't matter how large or how small a circle is, the distance that the circle is around is always about three times longer than it is across. So if you walk around a circle and let's say it's 30 feet, then you know it's going to be about 10 feet across. This is their special relationship. We use some other words to help us describe this. We use words like diameter. We know that a diameter is a line that goes through the middle of a circle and across it. So when I say how far a circle is across, I'm referring to the, di the diameter. Another word we use is circumference. A little bit longer of a word. But the circumference, as you can see where I've written it, that's our word for how long a circle is around. So pi, we said it's a relationship between how far a circle is around compared to how far it is across. And we said that pi is about the number three. And that's an important association. In your mind, you should always associate pi with about the number three. And depending on the problem, you may need to remember pi as far as this, 3.14159. But that's as far as we'll ever ask you to remember it. But it's about three. Start to think of these two numbers as almost the same. That will really help you. So pi is a relationship. It says that the circumference, right, is three times longer than the diameter. In other words, if you take the diameter and you multiply it by about three, you get the circumference. And that makes sense, right? If the diameter was here was 10, and we said it was about 30 around, well, to get 30, we can do the diameter times pi. And that's circumference. And here's one of our first formulas. Circumference is diameter times pi. And that's because the circumference is three times longer than the diameter. Another way you might see it written is like this. Circumference equals pi d or d pi. Remember this order doesn't matter if pi or d comes first. That's the commutative property of multiplication. One other thing we need to know is what we call the radius. Look how we've drawn this here. The radius is one half the diameter. So sometimes instead of writing circumferences the diameter times about three, we say it's two radiuses times pi because two radiuses is the same thing as diameter. Now what we need to know and think about is what happens if we're given the circumference? Sometimes we're told the circumference is a certain amount. The circumference is 30 feet. Then we need to figure out the diameter and the radius. Well, this is kind of easy. If we remember 
that the circumference is three times longer, or about three times longer, than it is across. That's what pi tells us. So if that's true, and let's just look at this, if the circumference around is 30 feet, and that's about three times longer than it has to be across the diameter, then our diameter's got to be about 10 feet. And it also makes sense then that our radius is 5 feet. The way they would word this problem, and this is a, an important thing to start thinking about, is they would want you to estimate the value of pi. Since pi is about 3.14159, when we estimate pi, we set pi equal to 3, and that's what we did here. We used 3 as a value of pi. Let's look at another example. If the circumference is 300 feet, what's the diameter and what's the radius? Well, pi is about 3, and we're going to estimate pi. So we're going to use this value of 3, which means the diameter is about 3 times shorter than 300. So we divide 300 by 3 and get the diameter, which is 100. Notice what I did and said there. To get the circumference, to get the excuse me, diameter, we can do circumference divided by pi, and that equals diameter. Also, that the radius is half that. So the radius would be 50 feet. And notice, to get the radius, we can divide the diameter by 2. Sometimes, we're given a circumference in terms of pi, like this. And what this means is that the circumference, it's not 30, it's 30 times pi. And we said before, we're to keep this in mind, that pi is basically around th a little bit more than 3. So they're saying the circumference is about 90, not 30. But in fact, we're going to skip that. Because when they give you something like this, they're writing the answer in terms of pi. They're using pi in the way they write out their value. So they would say, what is the diameter exactly? Or what is the radius exactly? So we shouldn't worry about the fact that pi is irrational and that we have to memorize it to about 3.14159. What we should remember is the formula for circumference with the, is that the circumference is diameter times pi. So let's think about this in terms of actual physical placement. I'll write this equation below. Look at these two equations. This circumference matches that symbol. This pi matches that symbol. So the only thing left are these two. Since they're written the same way, 30 is the diameter. And the radius is 15. In fact, whenever you have circumference written in terms of pi, this first number right here is always the diameter. And then you take that and divide it by 2, and you always get the radius. Sometimes we have to deal with the area of a circle. Area of a circle, let's write that formula out because I'm sure you've seen it before, is pi times the radius times the radius or radius squared. Let's be careful about one thing right away. This little exponent only applies to the radius, not to the entire thing. So if I gave you a radius of 2, the area is pi 2 squared. So it's pi times 4. That would be your area. Notice, I didn't do 4 times pi and then or excuse me, 2 times pi and then square pi as well. I left pi alone. That's the, the idea. So what, where does this come from? Let's quickly go over that. If you have a square, and each side of the square is the side of the radius, we call this square, this area, radius squared. So here's our first part of the equation. There it is, radius squared. Now the interesting fact is that if you took this square, and you cloned it, put it over here, and then you cloned that, 
and you put it over here, and then you clone that, well, we have four radius squares. But in fact, if we want to know the area of the circle, that circle right here is exactly equal to a little bit over one, two, three squares. So three squares make a circle, about. And that's where this comes in. It's saying three times the size of the square gives you the area of the circle. So how do we apply this idea? You might see a problem where it says the area of a circle is 100 pi. This is written in terms of pi. Think about our equation, pi times the radius squared. So when you have the area in terms of pi, this number is the radius squared. So all you need to do is find the square root of that number. And that makes sense. If your radius was 10, your area would be 10 times 10 times pi, or 100. And that's your radius, and your diameters double that. Let's look at another one. Let's say your area equals 36 pi. Same idea. This number, 36, equals your radius squared. Right? It's right there in the equation. Whatever number you have multiplied by pi is radius squared. So the radius is just the square root of that number. The square root of 36 is just 6. And r, the radius is 6, and diameter is 12. Sometimes, sometimes they might give you an area in this format. Just a number, not in terms of pi, but just a number. What we do then is estimate pi to 3. Because, well, first of all, they'll tell you to. But secondly, because they don't want to deal with dividing by a huge decimal number. Then we should remember the formula, again, is pi times radius times radius. So, we have to take this number, break it down, and find out what that radius must have been. We're estimating pi as 3. So let's work backwards. If radius times radius times pi is 300, well then 300 divided by the pi should tell us part of this equation. What the radius and the radius must have been. So let's do that. 300 divided by 3 is 100. So that means that the radius times the radius was 100. Hmm. Well, we take the square root of 100, and that tells us that the radius is 10, because 10 times 10 is 100. So let's, let's apply this back into the formula and make sure we're on the right track. If the radius was 10, it would be 10 times 10 times pi. 10 times 10 is 100. Pi we're estimating as 3. So there we go, we get 300.